Hi, today I'd like to introduce you to a series of videos focused on financial titans through gurus and masters of investing. One by one, I'll introduce you to world-renowned investors and their strategies that allow them to significantly outperform the market over the long term. We'll look at personalities like Martin Zweig, Peter Lynch, Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett. So there's definitely something to look forward to. Because in the short term it's no problem to outperform an index. For example the S&P 500, the most important index of the US stock market. But can you outperform the S&P 500 in the long run? For several years, year after year, decades? That's quite a challenge. In this series of videos I'm going to discuss beating the market benchmark using the knowledge of successful investors. Successful financiers have a different approach than ordinary investors. They don't focus on short-term market fluctuations, but look for long-term trends and investment opportunities. Moreover, they are cautious and do not lose their nerve during temporary market downturns. They have the ability to pick the right investments and hold firm to their strategy even in times of turbulence. Welcome to my channel Invest with Jiri. Here I am dedicated to educating you on how to handle money, earning, saving, investing. If you have similar interests, click like and subscribe with a bell to get notified of new videos. Let's do this. Looking at the S&P 500 since 1971, it looks like the market just keeps going up. The S&P 500 has risen an average of 11% per year over the last 60 years between 1960 and 2020. I'll give the percentage increases without accounting for inflation to make it easier. Between 1950 and 1970 the annual return was 12.1% and even averaged 13% between 1983 and 2003. Just buy the SPY ETF and wait. So if I buy an S&P 500 index ETF in the form of the SPY ticker, will I ensure I have enough money for retirement? Sure. But you have to meet a few conditions. Long enough investment horizon. Buy when the market is down. Have confidence in your abilities even if the market is going down. Then you can achieve a high pension and a fat portfolio. I have dedicated a video to investing in a single SPY ticker link here. Why do people earn less than the market average? Most ordinary investors are not very successful. They tend to buy when the market is at its peak and sell when it is falling. In addition, they realize gains too early while letting losses mount, thereby liquidating the capital needed to invest. The market rises 11.8%, but the investor earns only 4.3%. How is this possible? If we put it in numbers, over the period from 1987 to 2006, the average annual growth rate of the S&P 500 index was 11.8%, while the average investor earned only 4.3% per year. A surprisingly large difference, isn't it? Let's move on. Most professional portfolio managers and analysts underperform the aforementioned S&P 500 index. Even small differences in performance will translate into overall portfolio underperformance in the long run. The ups and downs in the markets alternate with periods of long stagnation. The index has neither risen nor fallen for several years. Historically, there are periods for indices tracking the performance of a state's economy that show little or no growth for long periods of time. For example, the S&P 500 has been in a channel for almost 13 years since 2000 and has not produced any returns. Why are investment funds performing so poorly? They have experts for everything, don't they? Let's look at an example. Between 1983 and 2003 the average annual market growth was 13%, while the average investment fund return over the same period was 10.3%. The difference is only 2.7%. This difference may seem insignificant, but appearances are deceptive. After 20 years, the return on a $10,000 investment would differ by as much as $44,000. A market return of $115,000 compared to the $71,000 return of the average mutual fund. Investment experts and media analysts have a very low success rate with their predictions. Research based on 82,000 predictions made by experts shows that less than 20% of the total variation in outcomes can be correctly predicted. 
the shocking conclusion that emerges from this study is that the opinions of uh, ordinary investors have the same predictive value of those of experts. What's more, the more famous the expert, the worse their predictions. Experts may not be held responsible for their failed predictions. Investors have a need to explain events in the market. They simply reject the fact that most short-term market volatility is random. Perhaps uh, that is why they rely on specialists to explain market movements to them with confidence, even though they are often wrong four times out of five. In the short term, the market is too complex and irrational. To correctly predict and time the market is impossible. It is simply a hopeless task. Perhaps others will argue otherwise, but that's the way it is. We are largely deceived by our own thinking. People tend to look for patterns even where they don't exist. Stocks can fluctuate widely even for reasons that have little or no connection to the fundamentals of a given company. Within a year, there can be a 40-50% to 50 difference between the high and low without any obvious cause or connection to the fundamentals of the company. The biggest gains in the markets are often made in surprisingly short periods. To give an example, over a period of 81 years, 1926 to 2006, an investment of $100 in the S&P 500 index would generate $307,700. However, it was found that 99% of the profits came from only the top 4% of the most profitable months. If you missed those 4% periods, your return would be limited to $1,823. That's a significant difference. Research has shown that you need to time at least 74% of your decisions correctly. That's no easy task, especially when even the experts are often wrong four times out of five in their predictions. How to be successful in investing when mutual funds are below average, analysts in the media are wrong and the market is erratic. There are individuals who systematically outperform the market with their unique strategy. I'm not talking about short-term success, a long-term consistent performance. These are the financial masters, which is what I will be addressing in this video series. It is important to note that successful financial masters have a different approach than ordinary investors. If we want to learn how to invest better, we can take inspiration from their approach and practices. This does not mean that we have to become experts ourselves, but we can learn the proven strategies and rules. So what is important for success in the markets? Overall, independent of experts, our own education, discipline and long-term investment plan are the key success for investing in the stock market. Adapting the right strategies and learning from those who have achieved long-term success can subsequently lead to better results and higher appreciation of our assets. It works that way in everyday life, business, so why shouldn't it work in investing? Have fun and invest wisely.